A closer look at steel homes, a guest chef in our kitchen, and some helpful hints for the homemaker. All that and much more coming right up, and I hope you'll stay tuned. Providing entertainment for over 25 years, WALA-TV presents a tradition in Mobile, the Dot Moore Show. Once again, Dot Moore. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're so glad you're there. And today we have an expert on steel home construction and flexibility of design. Also in our kitchen, our guest chef is George Paniotu of Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. It's more, but now our feature fashion on location. Today, we brought our cameras to the Mobile Botanical Center in Spring Hill, Alabama. What a beautiful backdrop for a fashion spot. We're standing in the terraced parts of the center here, and in the back you'll find a trail for people to go into the wooded area, which is a nature trail. Also, there's a little bridge, a little waterfall, and many, many beautiful flowers to see, as well as a brand new rose garden with an oriental texture. Mobile Botanical Gardens in Spring Hill, a beautiful place, and our feature fashion today is in one of the interesting colors for spring. It's avocado. And it's a summer and spring knit. A very neat outfit with a long skirt and a full short jacket. Wear with it the little blouse of your choice because avocado blends with anything. And our feature fashion is courtesy of Holiday on Shell Road in Spring Hill. The experts on vinyl windows for the home have come up with some very good ideas why their product is great for the consumer and in this report we learn what some of them are a growing number of homeowners are seeing their way clear to invest in a home improvement that is said to have a guaranteed return according to experts vinyl windows can enhance both the look of a home and its resale value in addition many homeowners have found that by installing high quality vinyl windows they can cut heating and cooling bills one make of vinyl window tilts in for easy cleaning, never needs staining or painting, and wipes clean with mild soap and water. Plus, they have a special glass system that blocks out harmful UV rays from the sun. These high-performance vinyl windows come with a lifetime product warranty. The makers of the Quantum 2 window also guarantee the window will save consumers at least 49% on their annual fuel consumption. To learn more, visit the website at www.quantum2.net or call 866-2-QUANTUM. Well, from the medical comes a good report that research is in progress for those afflicted with paralysis, whereas 20 years ago, there was no research, only acceptance. Here's more on that subject. <laughs> It was a game I played better than anything. 11 seconds into my first collegiate game, I hit the boards and ended up here. It still bothers me that I'm considered a celebrity for breaking my neck. 20 years ago, the medical community wasn't doing much research to help people like me. The assumption was, if you're paralyzed, that was it. Scientists now know that's not the case, because scientists helped a paralyzed rat regain movement in its hind legs. They proved spinal cord nerves could regenerate. That stuff, I keep it because I'll use it again. No doubt about it. It'll be a while, but I'll use those things again. To learn more about animal research, visit www.fbresearch.org. Welcome back. Well, the southern United States is becoming more aware of steel frame homes. And today, my first guest is from Somerville, South Carolina. He is an authority on steel framing homes. And we're very happy to welcome Chuck Robertson. That's my it's pleasure. It's a pleasure to, be to see yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. And you've thank been you. on a tour for quite some time to acquaint the southeastern part of our country with steel frame homes. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh huh. Okay, I wanted to ask you something. Are we talking about fa prefabrication? Uh, the the term prefabrication means a, a different idea than what we what we're talking about. When we send our homes out in the steel, we're actually pre-panelizing those homes. Oh. Meaning that we'll do it in wall sections, floor sections, and roof sections. Send it out to the builder, and he actually does the erection on site. You have um, you have panelizers here in Mobile. We've noticed since we've been here, they do it out of wood. We do it out of steel. That's the difference. Well, and that's interesting because I think people do have an idea that they're prefabricated. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, well, what about competitive pricing with lumber? Okay. Uh, as lumber continues to uh, skyrocket up, I guess as uh, with the Canadian tariffs, it is it is continuing to, to go up. Uh, every day, the steel becomes more in line with the prices. Uh, right now, we're uh, we could probably build a house within just a few percentage points different difference than what you're building with wood right now. So we're really uh, we're in the right time and the right place to have our steel product introduced into the market. Hmm. Well, I know in certain parts of the country, are they more well known than other parts? Yes, oh, ma'am. They, sure, they sure are. We just um, took a trip out to Hawaii, where we kind of model our business out of out of the state of Hawaii. Right now, they're building 61 percent of all homes, all new construction is built with light gauge steel framing. Now, huh. that's not that way on the mainland, as they they refer to it. Uh, but in California, you, you do have states that are building up to 40,000 steel homes a year. It's slowly moving over to the to the southeast region. Hmm. And uh, but we have the same reasons to to need that product as they do out there. Interesting. Um, I wondered why you claim that it's a healthy place to live uh, in a steel frame. Well, we don't just claim it. We we actually document it and prove it because of our steel is an inert item. It does not absorb moisture, it doesn't uh, uh, allow molds and mildews to grow on it. So mm -hmm. therefore, by, by preventing that from happening, we're going to keep the indoor air in, in that house that much cleaner. I see. Well, you brought along some interesting tape. Let's take a look at that now and tell us what we're seeing okay. here. Great. Uh, what you see right here are some of our steel trusses that we actually designed the roofs with uh, on, our, on our homes. We're using uh, a Genesis engineering system which allows us to uh, pre-panelize these uh, homes on paper before we actually go to the field and do it. I want you to note here that we, all of our connections are screws and uh, they're not nails so therefore in high wind areas they're not going to pull out as a nail would. Here you see uh, just some, some stress walls. This is an insulation product that we use to seal our homes and you see it goes on uh, paper thin and expands uh, 100 times its shape. Mm. or its size. Now what this does is prevents any outside air infiltration into the home. This is another way we protect the indoor air quality in a home. This isn't a required method with uh, steel, but it is something that you're starting to see a lot more of it in the south. Because of the molds and mildews that we have and the high moisture, high humidity, this product prevents it. Uh, White Point Homes is one of the construction companies that exclusive, exclusively builds with steel. This project is in the summit in Somerville, South Carolina, and Don Gardner is the uh, architect. He uh, actively promotes the use of steel when building his homes. Uh, this is a William Poole design, and it's also one of the homes we build out of steel. Uh, it's important here to see our design flexibility and that we can take any, any model and turn it into a steel plan for your builder or yourself. And here again, just some of the nice detail work. Going down the street, you'd never know this was a steel home. Oh, five. very interesting. Um, I know that you have a, a regular list almost of benefits. Let's talk about what some of the benefits are as you see them of having a steel frame home. What you, when we started building with steel, we had to find a product that could get, deliver some mm -hmm. of the items we were looking for. We were looking for a product that was dimensionally stable, that didn't warp, creak, rot. Uh, obviously, steel does not do this. As we, as we pursued that product, uh, or those, those uh, benefits, we also found out that by having these, these benefits, we didn't have to worry about fire, we didn't have to worry about termites, and we didn't have to worry about the structure stability in high wind areas or in, say, earthquake zones, which um, South Carolina is in one. Most people don't, don't realize that. 
Would you say that it's easy to work with steel as it is with lumber? It's a learning curve like any switching to any new product. However, once the builders start working with it, they do find it much easier. Uh, we're about one third the weight of lumber. So when a fellow gets done at the end of the day, he's only lifted a third as much of the weight as he would have on a, on, on a day that he was working on a wood house. And with that in mind, we do find it much easier to work with. Hmm. Well, I think it's interesting uh, to note that you also are owner of a construction company of your own, as well as being on tour to acquaint people with steel frame houses. Um, do you feel like people are really getting more into the mood to try to use steel more than lumber? Yes, ma'am. The market is indicating that there's a definite demand for people to get and more for their money. Oh, and of course it occurs to everyone that in a hurricane it would be a good idea to have a steel frame home. Yes, ma'am. That's one and of the reasons we moved from Atlanta to the, the coast of South Carolina was because we knew we had a product that was a valid option uh, other than, than just wood framing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Very interesting. And good luck. Keep up the good work. My pleasure. Thank okay, you for having that's me. Chuck Robertson from Somerville, South Carolina. We'll be back after this. Earlier, our guest chef paid a visit to us, George Paniotu of Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, and we're going to run that tape for you right now. And welcome to the kitchen today with George Paniotu, who is a proud chef. The name. Thank you, Doc. Chris Ruth's Steakhouse. Right, Ruth's Chris Ruth's Steakhouse also. Chris Steakhouse. Either way, just come. That's a mouthful. Come celebrate with us. We'd love to have you. <laughs> Whatever you want to call us, just uh, call us in advance. That's okay, just call you. Huh? You know what we're going to do today? No, but I kind of um, imagine you've got a little here and a little, a little there. Oh, we're going to do a grilled beef quesadilla. A quesadilla is nothing more than a, uh, let's say, a, a tortilla turnover. You know what I mean? It, it really is. Or, or a tortilla pizza, clove yeah. pizza. Yeah, yeah. But um, what we start with is the cheese. Mm -hmm. And what I've got right here, I've got some um, Monterey Jack, uh -huh. mozzarella, and shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Great. I like jalapeno. Monterey Jack, but it might be a little too hot for people to I cook like today. I like the non-jalapeno okay. Monterey Jack. This is not jalapeno, so we're going to add some green onions to it. Okay. All right, we got some cilantro here. Cilantro is one. If you don't overdo cilantro, folks, it's, it's a wonderful uh, leafy uh, uh, Mexican parsley. If you overdo it, that's all you taste. It's strong. Yeah. Uh, so you want to go real, real, real light with it, okay? Now, make sure we got everything going here right. We're going to add a little salt, Dot. Okay. okay. Right. Salt helps Salt everything. goes in. Okay. A yeah. little bit of cumin. Now, what I'm doing, actually, once you get this recipe, this is a great basic quesadilla recipe. You can add anything from the... I'm having to be put beef today. You can put chicken. You can put roast duck. You can put smoked duck. Oh, it's very ham. finely it's good, ground. Absolutely. This is a little bit of cumin. You know what cumin yeah. is? Cumin is the key ingredient as far as smell goes in uh, chili. And then chili powder. You smell huh. cumin. You don't smell chili powder. Yeah. Smell cumin. So I guess they do, use it a lot in Mexican food. They do. Uh -huh. They do. But it's a wonderful spice. All I'm doing is mixing it up, Don. Okay. This is your basic cheese. Oh, also, what? What, should, what should go in there is, is well, you know what that can is? That is old El Paso chopped green chilies. But uh, where's Marcus? We don't have a can opener here today, folks. So, Marcus, thanks a lot. You ruined the show. I'm out of here. No, I'm not. I'll be here. <laughs> okay. Here we go, Dot. All right. Okay. Let's go. Turn up the fire a little bit. Uh, to make this, you take a, probably a 10-inch tortilla chip here, okay? Tortilla chip. Listen to this. Flour tortilla. All right. Great. You butter I the pan a little bit so it doesn't stick, all right? Yeah. Now, lay it in here like that. Okay. Now, what did you put in there, butter? Just butter, just yeah. to read it. You put olive oil, you put canola oil, you put any oil you want. Okay. Now, you're going to line one side of it, and it takes more than you, more cheese than you think, folks. Hmm. Okay? You're going to line one side of it. Well, it that. melts down pretty much. It does, much. pretty fast. Now, in this show today, we're going to do a lot of talking, Doc, because while this thing is cooking, <laughs> me and you are going to discuss world events. All right, we put a little beef on there. Mm, uh-huh. Beef on there. One time, I used buffalo steak. Today I'm just using buffalo steak. I, use, I just grilled this. I, I pre-grilled the beef here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now look at this. Look at this. Mmm. Okay. Mm. See that? Okay. Take this off right here. Now, what would you like to talk about, Doc? Well, 
What you this have? This is going to be. You have to cook this pretty slowly. Well, you you want to you want to cook it. It is a little little iffy to cook. The reason is. You want it to brown on one side, but not too quickly because you want it to melt the cheese on the inside, so the heat has yeah. to penetrate. And with this tricky little stove of yours, I'm having a good time. Where's George when I really need him to show me? But if you melt stove? that cheese too right. fast, it'll just run all, run all over the place. Yeah. So you're melting it in such a way that it's it's melting slowly, all right? Yeah. Which means the meat is working its way down into it. We're browning the bottom, I think. And we're getting there. Okay, Dot. So we're browning the bottom. But once again, as I said, this is a, a great simple recipe and the reason is the cheese part of the quesadilla lends itself to anything you can change up the cheeses if you want you can use feta yeah because I've used people feta have, cheese in here i use asiago they have preferences right smoked gouda is wonderful <clears throat> it really is but these three basic cheeses they even have bags of pre-made mexican cheeses now i saw some really stuff. it's a, everything is and not only ziploc bags that go with them you rip the top off you zip it and it's all ready for you they're making use. it so convenient they just don't supply the person to come to your home and do it uh, you know maybe they do that too i don't know you know the first time i went to california <laughs> i was just amazed i love mexican food right Excuse and me. there's a mexican Sorry, restaurant folks. on every corner there yeah. are right. oh it's beginning to melt i can That's see right. the trick here is so yeah. it over dot without a Make Gee, a complete mess of it. You've got to be good to pick that Hold up. On, let me show you what you got to do here. See? <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. This is the part we haven't got down yet. There we go. Yeah, well, that's okay. You can wait help a it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be careful when you do it. Really, it's funny. But if you're not careful when you do it, you could make a mess. So. But it'll we, it'll stick now because it's, oh, it's together right. on the other side. But it's side. just that part where you flip it over. You just need to be real, real careful. And it is a little tricky. But the trick is... I did it. It's done. <laughs> All right, here we go. You see that beautiful brown color right there? Yeah. I'll move this thing out of the way. Okay, move that out of the way. In one minute, what we're going to do, and let me tell you what this goes with. Anything. Uh, but it goes especially good with sour cream. Oh. With salsa. Well, Any, now, uh, salsa. Guacamole salad, wonderful. Sliced, yeah. uh, or just plain old sliced, um. Yeah. Sliced oh. avocado, it's fine. See, I stick in the oh, that's nice. That's gonna be real nice, Dot. Do you ever prepare Mexican food in the in the steakhouse? Uh, we we come up with some specials once in a while. We haven't done anything truly Mexican yet. We've done some salsas on top of some meat. Yeah, and well, like I know that. you specialize okay, in Dot, steaks, but it's not that. You also do right. seafood. We do a lot of seafood. Yeah. I, right now, about a third of our business is actually seafood. But we do so much seafood business because we have Mobians. A lot of Mobians yeah. come to see us. They want seafood. I say it's the freshest in town. It really is. We get it seven days a week in the door, even from Pensacola on Sunday mornings. A lot really? Of times we do. Oh it's my! It's amazing. Okay, that's Don. a pretty big restaurant chain, is it not? <sighs> it's actually, it is the largest fine dining and steakhouse restaurant chain in the world. Yeah, I've heard no a lot about. That. We don't advertise a lot because what we're doing is local. Okay, Don. Here yeah. We uh oh. We are localizing the restaurant to where the locals feel it's, it's their own, and we're putting our personal touches on it. That's right. hot. That is hot. Course. What we're going to do to make it even better, Don? Now you slice. I was going to ask you about that, so you can just have it bite size more or less. Right. And mm -hmm. let me show the beauty of garnishing. What you do? You put one up here. Now the salsa you have there, you could just dip it oh, in. Oh, right. You dip it in. You can put the salsa on top. And if you don't want to make a salsa, folks, go to the store and buy a salsa. It will be great. Buy your favorite sauce. I have a favorite sauce. I don't want to see who it is, but I, really, I have a favorite store-bought sauce, and I don't feel like doing it myself, Doc. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So. But you know, that's a here, great idea for just kind of a snack-type meal. It's a wonderful appetizer, snack, or d'oeuvre type yeah. meal. Yeah. I mean, just look at the plate present. It's an absolutely Ooh, beautiful plate yes. presentation. I won't step that way, but it is, it's a beautiful plate presentation. That'll do Mexico proud, those colors. Greek style. Throw oh, a little feta should. cheese and make a Greek style uh, case of Yeah, and I see the beef distributed all mm -hmm. through it. Yeah, it. so it's a very nutritive as well. Throw some sour cream on that. I happen to have some. We don't need and to do that. I don't well. think that that would be really fattening. I don't. Not much. Except Not much. for the cheese, mate. Oh, sour cream yeah, on the side. There you go. Dot, perfection. Perfection personified. <laughs> That's one of From the great. Georgie. In my book, sour cream is one of the greatest inventions they ever came up with. <laughs> oh, I thought sliced bread was really good myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, we have the recipe for you. If you want it, just drop me a self-addressed envelope, and I will see that you get it. Thank you so much, George. God, it's my pleasure. Thank you again for having me okay, on. Okay, we'll see you the next right. time. Okay, we'll be back.
If you're a frequent traveler, you might want to pro uh, get yourself connected with a preferred membership program. has great advantages for people who travel a lot, and in this report you'll find out some of the reasons why. Frequent travelers often get more for their travel money. They look for accommodations at places offering frequent traveler packages. These smart travelers also say that spending money on certain basics can save them from some travel problems. Helpful items include a pocket knife, travel alarm clock, mini luggage cart, portable light, and travel iron. Many savvy travelers also look for lodging that offers the red carpet treatment to members of a preferred membership program. One such program is offered by one of the nation's largest chains of inexpensive lodging properties. Called the Ready Card Preferred Member Program, it rewards frequent guests with points that add up for a free night stay at over 350 red roof inns. Guests also get advanced automated reservations, express check-in, priority room requests, and special customer service via a new 800 number. For more information, visit the Red Roof Inns at www.redroof.com. Thank you for watching, and until we join you next week, I hope you stay happy.